Hello. Welcome. Thank you for your interest in Mythbusting 5 Common Misperceptions about Linux Virtualization. My name is Kurt Milne. I'm the Managing Director of the IT Process Institute. We're an independent research organization focused on identifying and studying top performing IT organizations. For the next 20 minutes, we'll be talking about Linux virtualization, and specifically helping you make better decisions about choosing a virtualization solution. We'll talk about how agility and operating flexibility, and not cost, are pushing a second wave of virtualization. We'll go through five misperceptions that may lead you astray when making decisions about virtualizing your Linux environment. And we'll highlight how Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization is a great solution for virtualizing Linux on x86, especially if you've already standardized on Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And so the key takeaways are one is for those currently responsible for Linux, you should maintain control of decision about virtualization for the Linux platform. And then the second is that Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization is a solution that allows you to build on the choice you've already made to standardize on Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So let's start by looking at how virtualization strategy fits into the bigger context. So we really start with the business, and the business is increasingly agile. And what I mean by that is agile development, rapid prototyping, you know, apps are enabling products and services that touch customers in ways that weren't even in the realm of thinking just a few years ago. And so that shift is impacting IT. So IT must help accelerate the process used to get new features and functions into users' hands. And the IT infrastructure is no longer custom designed for each new service. It's not pre-provisioned to meet long-term usage projections. Instead, these applications or apps are being designed to utilize highly standardized infrastructure that scale as usage changes. So the result of that business shift is that the virtualization strategy is shifting as well. So virtualization technology is enabling new dynamic service delivery models, self-service deployment, virtualized resource pools that scale up or scale out to meet changing usage levels. And IT is also deploying service support strategies that rely on reprovision of workloads instead of repair, and usage-based billing that operationalize costs based on demand. So the net result is that virtualization has this virtualization strategy has shifted. And business critical workloads in a Linux environment are being virtualized as a result of this shift. And as a result, the virtualization solution criteria has changed. So let's talk about some of these uh, misperceptions that impact your decisions about your virtualization solution. So the assumptions that help guide decisions about virtualization when cost reduction and consolidation was the focus no longer apply. So be careful. The, the risk is that these assumptions or misperceptions would lead you astray as you develop plans to virtualize Linux workloads now that agility and operating flexibility are, are more the focus. So let's talk about the first misperception. The first misperception is that the consolidation is, continues to be the driver of the Linux virtualization trend. And the reality is that it's part of a broader shift to support dynamic service delivery models. So the first wave of consolidation of, of virtualization was driven by consolidation. Uh, Windows servers tended to have quality problems that resulted in one app per server. Uh, and virtualization allowed consolidation of multiple servers on a single physical host to achieve better asset utilization, CapEx savings. So that's a pretty well-known uh, mechanism. But today, you know, we've got 50 to 60 percent of Windows workloads that are virtualized, but the majority of Linux-based workloads have yet to be virtualized. And so we see the second wave of virtualization being driven by a need to respond to changing business requirements, 
to gain operating flexibility, agility, really to increase IT's responsiveness to those changing business needs. So how does this impact your decisions? Well, I recommend that you pick a solution that optimizes operating flexibility, IT responsiveness as the primary concern. And the cost and consolidation of, of Linux environment is really a secondary concern. So the second misperception is that we need to standardize on a single virtualization platform. This, so the shift from priorities from cost to flexibility has a real impact on this decision. Cost reduction focus strategy, in it, you know, standardization made sense. But with new technology, new skills, new risks, having a single platform was the right approach. But when agility and flexibility is the strategy, then specialization is a more appropriate approach. So to pick a solution that optimizes performance, functionality, ease of management for each computing environment. So the reality is it's OK to have multiple virtualization platforms. A recent survey conducted by Red Hat of its Linux customers showed that something like 70% of them are already using multiple virtualization platforms. So to help your decision, I recommend that you pick a virtualization solution that optimizes agility and oper operational flexibility for Linux. So the third misperception is that the host OS and the hypervisor don't matter. You know, that the hypervisor is a black box, and what's important are the guest operating systems and workloads. But what we find is that Linux is a preferred OS for mission-critical applications, especially in the cloud environment. And this is really key as you're thinking about virtualizing Linux, is the choice of the hypervisor is really an extension of the choice you've made about the host OS. The host OS and the hypervisor work together in a unified management of resources, processes, identity, security. Together, they allow the system administrator to do the, all the things they expect from Linux. So to improve your decision, you know, I recommend that you view the choice of the host OS and the hypervisor as an extension of the decision that you've already made about the host OS. Don't treat it as a black box. This choice of hypervisor does matter. And again, as I said at the beginning, I really recommend that you keep the choice of the hypervisor and the virtualization solution with those that are already familiar with the Linux environment. So I said that Linux is, is increasingly being standardized on as, as the, the OS of choice in dynamic IT environments. So the Linux Foundation did a survey in 2012 on, on OS adoption trends. They found that 8 out of 10 cloud environments are built on Linux. Uh, almost 3 out of 4 enterprises are choosing Linux to support big data projects. 80% of those surveyed are growing their Linux install base, while only 22% are growing their, their Windows, Windows server footprint. So, you know, we've got a, the Linux Foundation survey of, of Linux users showing that Linux is growing. So, we, you know, we take a, that with a little grain of salt. Um, but, I, again, I think that the point is that, that Linux deployments are being used for business-critical applications. They're being used and standardized on in these dynamic IT environments, and that the hypervisor and virtualization capabilities really are an extension of the OS. So, okay, the fourth misperception is that Linux requires a third-party hypervisor. So, in reality, Linux already includes KVM, which is short for kernel-level virtual machine, and that is a lightweight hypervisor that comes with the Linux kernel. So KVM is supported by major industry players. 
It's got broad participation in the open source community. It's being broadly adopted in enterprise environments. So in an enterprise environment or dynamic IT environment, it's really important to reduce complexity. And adding a separate hypervisor adds complexity. It requires new skills. It drags unfamiliar tools. So those responsible for Linux OS, you know, KVM makes life easier. You can upgrade the host operating systems and hypervisor at the same time. The guest operating system includes para-virtualization drivers that would be installed and managed separately with other solutions. So KVM really is a good approach. So I recommend that you choose KVM to reduce complexity, leverage existing Linux skills, and simplify maintenance of critical environments. So the fifth misperception that I want to talk about is that, that KVM management solutions are not mature. So KVM is great. It can carve up a server into multiple servers. But in an enterprise environment, if you're going to expand beyond one host, you really need management capabilities to optimize agility and flexibility. So the reality is that there's considerable open source momentum behind both KVM and the management solutions that allow KVM to scale. So KVM is an open source community with broad uh, enterprise support. And Overt is also an open source project for Linux-based KVM virtualization. It's a server virtualization management system with advanced capabilities for both hosts and guests. So in many important ways, the overt type solutions have reached feature parity with other virtualization management solutions. They include high availability, live migration, resource management, system scheduling, all the things you need to achieve those agility and operational flexibility objectives with your Linux virtualization strategy. So I recommend you pick a KVM-based hypervisor and an overt-based solution for the enterprise Linux management of virtualization. Let's talk a little bit about Red Hat enterprise virtualization. It really is a good choice for your Linux virtualization strategy, and especially those that have already made the choice to standardize on Red Hat enterprise Linux. So the Red Hat solution has two main components. One is the hypervisor. So I already said that KVM is a lightweight host that comes with the Linux kernel. But Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization Hypervisor uh, also includes a smaller footprint variant, that kind of an appliance-like bare metal version. It doesn't require the full Linux installation. And it may be a good choice for those with many Windows guest operating systems or those that want to reduce the cyber attack footprint of host systems. So Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization also has a uh, manager component. It's overt based. It's a feature rich management solution for virtual data centers, clusters, hosts, and guests. It includes advanced features that meet the agility and operational flexibility requirements that we've been talking about Again, like live migration, high availability, you know, P2V and snapshot management, resource management, system scheduling. If, if a workload can run bare metal in Linux, it can be virtualized in Red Hat Enterprise virtualization without having to replatform. And these capabilities really do deliver on these shifting virtualization priorities. They meet the needs of the second wave of virtualization and are really a great choice for your Linux virtualization strategy. So what's special about the Red Hat solution? Well, I think there's quite a few things that make it a, a great choice for your virtualization of Linux environments. So here are a few highlights, and there are more details available on the Red Hat website. Um, but from a performance standpoint, you know, the bottom line is that Linux workloads run better on a virtualization solution that's optimized for Linux. So in a recent SpecVirt benchmark, Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization beat 
the other leading virtualization solutions, both on the raw performance score and on the number of VMs that yielded that performance score. So it was really quite an impressive performance benchmark. Red Hat virtualization can scale on bigger servers than other leading solutions, both in the number of CPUs and cores. So you can go by the top of the line host server with you know, eight sockets, 160 virtual CPUs, two terabytes of RAM, and they're really better. Your, your workloads are going to run better on these bigger servers than with other solutions. Similarly, they achieve higher density, so you can improve on what you've already got with your better metal OS, and, and the cost per VM is really very low because of the high density that you can achieve. From a security standpoint, Linux is secure. Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization is a, uses an extension of the capabilities in Linux OS, so they share the same features and capabilities. And then I talked about the enterprise features that help deliver on agility and flexibility. Um, and the latest release of Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization, so it's release 3.1, I think really has reached a point where it's kind of feature parity with other solutions that give you that agility and operational flexibility and scale in an enterprise environment. And the cost advantage is really significant as well. Uh, you know, let Linux subscribers understand how a subscription model works, um, but, but Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization with Red Hat Enterprise Linux um, has some operational efficiency advantage as well. So the runtime is going to look familiar and, f and have a familiar look and feel for administrators. Administrators understand what a KVM hypervisor host is, and they can use the same tools to check the OS uh, and the KVM. And when you do maintenance or upgrade, you know, you connect to the Red Hat network to upgrade your OS, then you upgrade the hypervisor, you can upgrade the enterprise uh, virtualization tools. It's really a natural process, so there are no special steps or actions required. And, you know, to get to the bottom line, independent studies have shown that, that the Red Hat solution is three to five times lower total cost of ownership than other virtualization management solutions. So earlier I said that agility and flexibility are the primary objectives and cost is secondary, but we all know that cost is always a priority. And three to five times lower total cost of ownership for enterprise scale, security, and other solution features that you get from Red Hat Enterprise Linux really is significant and impressive. So let's wrap up with some specific actions you can take so one is understand your business agility requirements and, and know what the, the business is uh, trying to accomplish. And then verify that IT is increasing responsiveness. And then articulate your virtualization strategy in a way that supports the greater agility and responsiveness that IT is delivering to the business. So verify that it's not just about cost and consolidation but that these other agility and operation flexibility capabilities are the primary objective or important for your Linux virtualization strategy. Keep the Linux virtualization decision with the Linux team because virtualization is an extension of the OS um, and virtualization solution that is optimized for Linux is going to give you better results. So again, it's okay to specialize you don't need a standard platform across all environments. Pick one that's going to give you the best results. And then finally, consider Red Hat Enterprise virtualization. If you standardized on Red Hat Enterprise Linux, view the virtualization de decision as an extension of that OS decision and turn to Red Hat for a total solution. So thank you for your time today. If you have more questions, there's more information available at the Red Hat website. Thank you.